All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome and sorry for the uh, delay here. I've had to switch over. We had some technical difficulties and I've had to switch over to my uh, laptop here, but I want to welcome, I've got a great guest today, Kareen Stephanie from Cam Inc. Welcome, Kareen. How you doing? Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Where are you at in the world? Uh, tell us about uh, where we can find you right now if we were going to go looking. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go looking? Well, in the world, I'm located in Montreal, Quebec. Bonjour tout le monde. <laughs> we have to throw in our little French. Um, so I'm located in Montreal, Quebec. Um, and yeah, everybody can find me on every social media platform <laughs> from LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and right here with you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Great. Tell us a little bit. We've had some good conversations. Actually, uh, you just got done interviewing me, which was fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into your new podcast here in a little bit. But tell us, you know, let's start with your journey in um, recruiting. How did you get into this industry? Tell us a little bit about your story. Wow. Um, well, to start off, I started within human resources many, many years ago. Um, so I was really fortunate. I worked for a very large transport company. Um, and I was shown the ropes and given, started at the very beginning as an admin assistant, working my way through and I got the chance to touch on to health and safety, then went into more of a recruiting for drivers and package handlers. So that was always fun. I think everybody, whoever shared an office with me during those times and probably even now, always get a kick because I'm very loud. <laughs> <laughs> So from then on, um, as my career kept on growing, I ended up branching off into aviation. And my very first organization that I worked with in aviation was doing um, the food handling for the airplanes. So I was the HR generalist for this organization. And I gained so much experience in recruiting and hiring and just HR practices, unionized settings. And from there, it just launched my career. I was fortunate to have great mentors who helped and guided me and gave me the ins and outs. And fast forward to now, opening up Cam Inc., the staffing solutions provider many years later, you know, I was able to pull from my background and really put forward a good solution for my clients for my applicants because I understood what it was like sitting on the other side of the desk as that HR manager and director looking for staff and being very stressed. So yeah, that's a bit about uh, where I've come from all the awesome. years of aviation. <laughs> so you went, you went from working in HR directly into starting your own agency. You never worked for a third party agency other than your own. No, only worked for my own. I did, I worked for a company that they had agencies uh, within and affiliated, but I did not have the opportunity to work directly in that atmosphere, I guess you can say. Right. So yeah, going from HR and then saying, hey, listen, I'm going to jump into this. And, you know, I was really good at recruiting and it was something that I was always passionate about. You know, there's something when you tell someone, hey, guess what, you're getting hired or congratulations, you're being mm -hmm. hired today. You know, for myself, I look at it as I've changed that person's life for that day. And I've changed that person's life for the years to come, you know, and even being the HR uh, manager or director, when I have the opportunity to do that, I saw the results. And for myself, you walk away from the office, like, nice, I found an amazing person, like, this is going to work out just great. So I really wanted to capture that going into this stage in my career. Got it. What did you, what were kind of some of your fears as you went out and said, Hey, I'm going to go do this on my own now. Like what were some of the things you had to kind of push through and break through with that? <laughs> my daily fears or <laughs> like, <every> <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, it depends. Um, you know, like everybody else, when you branch off on your own, I think initially starting up, it was, what did I do? you know, what am I doing? And I remember some of the comments that I got like within the first month and one of them sticks to me. And I, I think it's really important to share because, you know, I don't think that I'm alone in this. Um, when I first branched off, there was a person who came to me and said, well, you know, you were an HR director. You were like at the top of your career and now you're just a recruiter. And 
I took that and I walked away. I was like, no, but I'm not. I'm right. a business owner. I'm putting myself out there and I'm changing somebody's career and I'm changing people's lives. You know, so I'm doing something really good. And yes, right. I, I was an HR director and I have that experience and I will never lose that. And I'm able to hone in on that. So I think that was my real fear is overcoming that and saying, you know what? No, this is the best solution for me. And this is really what I want to do. So that right off the bat. And two, putting yourself out there, it's always, am I going to find clients? Mm -hmm. Are people going to want to come to me? Because, I mean, recruitment agencies, staffing firms, headhunters, you know, there's so many of us that are out there. And what makes each of us stand out? And why would I select you versus you? And so forth, you know. Right. So, that was always my biggest fear and it continues on being my biggest fear because it is, you know, a challenge all the time to do something different or, you know, what else can I offer to my clients or keep my clients happy and my mm -hmm. applicants, my talent pool is very important to me. Right. So. You know, you said something that I think is really interesting, which is, you know, not everybody supports you on these journeys. And sometimes it's even people that are close to you that are like, Hey, like you're saying, Hey, what are you doing? You're leaving HR. Perfect. You're kind of at the pinnacle. Why are you doing this? How important do you think it is to kind of be in your own bubble and really just kind of pursuing your passion? Because that's obviously what, what you're doing here. I mean, you had a great gig, like you're saying, HR director. Now you're, you know, you, you started back over, um, not now, but when you did it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, how important is it to kind of stay in your own bubble and kind of ignore even some of those people we think are closest to us? You know, I think if shedding away um, the naysayers, it really, you know, really shutting away the naysayers and focusing on those who are your support system. And I was so astonished and even still, and it's a huge shout out to my family, my friends, um, my colleagues that, you know, came out and was like, you know, this is what you should have always been doing. This mm -hmm. is wow. Like, you know, we knew that you were going to do this. We knew that it was just a matter of time. And you always talked about wanting to do something different and really challenging yourself. Because in doing Chem Inc., it was a challenge to myself. You know, like mm -hmm. I said, it was a comfortable gig. It was an amazing opportunity. I was within aerospace and high-end aerospace. And then coming into here, it was like, okay, well, what market? I've done a bit of this, a bit of that. And it was really, okay, break away the sound, focus on what's important, my clients, my, my passion, and my applicants, you know, and what I want to do, the positive. So surrounding myself with the people who supported and shelling out all of those names here. Yeah, absolutely. How, how long have you had Cam Inc. now? Cam Inc. originally started in 2016. And okay. when the company originally started, it was Cam Inc. Consulting. So at that point, my partner... He was just doing IT services and, you know, project management and so forth. And then at the beginning of 2019, we'll say around, yeah, I guess you can say about then, is when Cam Inc. really came out and said, okay, yeah, we're here, you know, and starting up the staffing side. Because at that point, I was like, you know what, this is my next path. How can I do this? And we partnered up and here I am. <laughs> You hear more about the staffing solutions than you do the consulting at this point. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, um, we're here with uh, Kareen Stephanie with Cam Inc. Uh, if you're watching this, give us a little like, give us a love, and also feel free to uh, leave us some questions in the comments so uh, I'll, we can ask her anything. She said she'll answer anything today. So, um, <laughs> But um, what do you feel like, you know, kind of now that you're on this journey, what are some of the reminders you can give people that are thinking about starting their own recruiting business or staffing business or, or have started, you know, where have you kind of found that, that balance of, of success and, and kind of getting to the next level, so to speak? I think, you know, one of the things that I tell everybody when they're going into a new career is make it your own, you know, and that was something that was told to me many, many years ago. And I remember going into a role and I was nervous. I was scared. And my employer turned around and said, well, you know what, Kareen, just make it your own. I was like, well, how do I make this job my own? What am I supposed to do? I don't understand. And now many years, 15 years later, I was like, oh, yeah, that's what she meant. Okay, this is how I make it my own. And I've really practiced that going through. Make people realize why they've selected you. Make people realize why you're doing what you're doing. 
you know. So if anything I could tell anybody, and I always do, make it your own. Put your own personal stamp on it, you know, because that's where you're going to get recognized. It's going to be scary. You're going to have challenges. You're going to close the office at night and say, what did I do? And then you'll have some sort of epiphany overnight and say, you know what, I can do this. I'm coming back tomorrow. I am doing this. I'm going to be stronger, better. And you'll have a new idea. And just go with it. Roll with it. Yep. Awesome. What would you say, you know, I mean, you work, are, are you predominantly in Canada with your market or mm-hmm. do you work in the, in the United States as well? Uh, mainly in Canada for now. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, what are the differences between the two markets that you see from a, from a hiring standpoint, but you're, I can tell you, (laughs) (laughs) I can tell you based on my past experience, because I have had the opportunity to work with organizations in the United States. So I fully understand on both sides. Um, It was really where I went to recruit. That was something that I found was a huge difference. And, you know, when I recruited in Canada, the, the areas, you know, the job boards and so forth was very mainstream or it was, Everybody ran to, say, Indeed. Everybody ran to Job Boom. Everybody ran to a certain board. Whereas in the States, it was completely different. I was posting on job boards that I never would have thought. I was attending networking events in places that I was like, I, I, I'm not allowed to do that back home. I can't recruit at this location. Like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? So I found the out of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that really had to come to play because when you're recruiting for an industry or area that you're not familiar with, you've never recruited in, you got to learn it fast and you have to think outside the box. So I found that was a huge difference between the United States was the areas that I would go, wouldn't it be the traditional ones I would do here in Canada. Got it. Now, how important is it? I mean, I know you're kind of niched in the aviation space. I mean, how important is that for your business to, to kind of pick an area of focus? Um, you know, I say everybody always, and it's funny because everybody has put me in the aviation and aerospace just because, you know, I was the HR director of a company, um, for aviation and aerospace. And that's really where everybody knew me. Um, but I wouldn't say that was too important because, you know, our clients are really diversified, you know, from pharmaceutical to transportation. And it's really areas that not only I've recruited for, but my partner has done as well. So we're Mm -hmm. able to, you know, pick at each other's knowledge and really work through it. So uh, it, I guess it really depends (laughs) for, for what you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable in a specific industry, that would be one huge thing I would say to people. If you're comfortable and you understand and know it, go with it. If you're starting out, go with it. Um, don't say that you can recruit for something when you can't, you know, right. because you get, it, it becomes harder and it becomes a bigger challenge, you know, not to say that you won't be successful, but really do what you know and, you know, bridge those challenges. And when you're comfortable in it, then recruit in it. Beautiful. I love that advice. What would you say, you know, I, we've basically interacted through, and I think this is what's great, you know, through social media, right? We are, we've networked. Um, and a lot of my clients, we network. That's how I meet is, you know, I work with people all across the world, um, you know, all bun- done through social media. I really don't get a chance to meet my clients as much face to face, but I think, you know, things like this, as we're talking on zoom, you know, creates much more, you know, close bond, but how has social media impacted your business, you know, and, and, and more specifically here on the recruiting side when it comes to attracting talent and, and um, you know, just engaging with, with the recruiting audience? I mean, what's that been like for you? Have you, you have any secrets you can share with the audience? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, putting yourself out there is key, you know, and that has been really it, It's actually one of, I, I would say my key to success is really putting myself out there um to you know be recognized because when you are coming out onto a market you know applicants won't know who you are and they won't have trust or they won't understand what you're trying to do so when they see you in on different social media platforms or that they see you posting and so forth i think it's really important because then the audience that you're targeting is familiar with you so it gives that kind of bridge of gap, mm-hmm. kind of like what you and I did on LinkedIn, 
you know, that it bridged the gap of, hey, listen, I'm starting up this and, you know, let's connect. And it really opens up the audience to connect with you. Um, so I think that that is really key. And that would be my, my key for others. Put yourself out there, really, if anything. Put yourself out there, you know, do your post um, and don't be scared of going on to social media. You know, don't be scared of putting yourself on different platforms, different job boards, whatever it is, you know, but really be present. Yeah. Now, I know, you know, talking about kind of the fear of putting yourself out there, there's a lot of people that that's really, that's, that's what's holding people back is the fear of rejection, the fear of, you know, what if I get negative comments? But how do you, how have you kind of been able to push through that and really just be comfortable and be authentic as you put yourself out there? I don't think for myself, I would say that I'm comfortable <laughs> all the yeah. time, you know, because we are human at the end of the day. And, you know, there are certain things that we will challenge ourselves on. Um, but I mean, putting yourself out there, it for myself, it has been a challenge creating the content, putting up the videos is really something that I look at, I'm like, oh my gosh, the blooper reels. I mean, we've spoken about my blooper reels mm -hmm. and I find it so funny. And probably even during this interview, I'll have some of those, oops, oh my gosh, <laughs> yep. moments. But not to, not to be scared of it. I think when I first started posting, I would look at, okay, is anybody even gonna look at these videos? And oh my gosh, what if I get like one view? And I remember at the start, I would get, one person and then i was like okay you know it's one person one person is going to take I, I will take that person you know i don't care i will take them this is great and then slowly but surely more and more and more and most recently I, for myself and i'm still like oh wow i guess people are watching um going to a networking event that somebody said hey listen i love your stuff i you know i watch it i was like you do Thanks. You know, that's amazing. I'm, I'm really fortunate. Thank you so much um, that people are watching. But, you know, it will come. And you and I have, we, we've discussed it. And, it's, yep. you know, it will come. It does take time. It does take effort. But not to be scared because, you know, we all are scared. And people don't think that others are judging you. Because, you know, if it was so easy, they would put themselves up too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he said something that's really important, which is, you know, when you first put yourself out there, the traction's not there. And, and really the win is, is being in the consistency. You know, do you have any advice on how to kind of, you know, sometimes we're kind of attached to these vanity metrics, right? That society wants us to get the likes, comments, views, and shares. But at the end of the day, you know, a lot of these things are, you know, providing value for the market. And hopefully in exchange, you're going to get, you know, some, some interactive relationships and opportunities. But, you know, any, any feedback on that? I would say, you know, don't focus so much on how many people are watching, focus on what you're putting out, right. you know, really Love focus. That. If it's something that, you know, you're trying to put out a job or you're trying to help somebody or you're giving actual tips, focus on that, focus on your content, you know, and if you show that, hey, this is who I am, um, there is people out there. It's like, and like anything, there is a buyer for every home. There's, you know, a watcher for every video. Yep. Um, there is a client for every company to say, you know, there is, there are people out there who will come and say, hey, you know what, I like your stuff or, you know, I, I value the content that you're putting out. But when you focus so much on, okay, how many people, you're, it's just one of those bad tunnels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is such a bad tunnel because you're like, oh, well, nobody's watching or nobody's liking. So don't focus on how many likes, focus on what you're actually putting out. Mm -hmm. I think this cool thing too is, is, you know, you said when you show up to a networking event and then people are reaching out to you and saying, hey, I've seen your stuff. And I think that's cool. And I think that's even more of the power behind it is a lot of times our audiences don't, they don't interact and they don't engage. They see it, right? But they, you know, they don't like and comment. And I think that's why it's so important to be, to be consistent. But, you know, just for people that are listening, like, have you been able to track a tangible result from, from what you're doing on social media to actual, you know, revenue for back, lack of a better word? I don't know whether I could say that I've been able to track. Um, most definitely it has, it, it, like I said, it's a key to success, to our success, right. um, being out there, you know, our clients coming to us, um, our applicants, um, 
So I can't say that I can track it. Um, it's definitely something that we are trying to hone in on. Mm -hmm. um, and every applicant, it's always, where did you hear about us? Or every client, how did you hear about Cam Inc? You know? So it's really, we really try to do that and engage with our audience to see, okay, is it coming from social media? Is it coming from the job postings? Where is it? The website, what is it? You know? Um, so it is a difficult thing, I would say, that we yeah. to try to hone in on at this point. Right. Now, as I know you have a, a team. Do you incorporate your team with your social media strategy? I mean, all I've seen really, you know, is, is come from you, but I'm just curious. I mean, is that something that do you have them help you? Or are they a part of it? Like, what, what's that like? I would say not only the team, um, you know, my partner and my colleague, I would say not only them, but it's the audience. It's really from people that I speak to. Um, and it's, you know, my clients that I have been fortunate to work for. It's them who has really pushed forward and given me ideas and said, hey, you know what, I really liked when you posted this, can you do the videos? And even when it came down to Coffee with Cam, when we just started talking about that, that came up probably, I wanna say May of this year, that somebody, and it was a client who said, you know, I've been watching you and watching your videos and everything. This is what you should be doing. I was like, really? Really? You want, you would watch something like that? And he turned around and he said, yeah. He goes, that would be great. He goes, you should go around and do this. I was like, okay, let's see if we can put it into action. And now fast forward, it's being put into action. So that has been kind of a difference, I would say. Yep. Now, what do you with this new, you just kind of nice little transition for me there. So thank you. <laughs> but with uh, coffee with, you know, Cam, I mean, how is, what, what's kind of your vision with that podcast? You know, because I look back on my career and I look back on, you know, my path was not a traditional path. You know, I was given great opportunities that, you know, kind of guided me into human resources and allowed me to go back to school and you know, really helped me focus on what I wanted to do and bring me to here. Um, it was my, my personal journey, but it was also that of others that I spoke to. And I think really when everything just started coming up, it was somebody I had sat down with and they were telling me their story. And I love this person's story because I'm just like, wow, you know, they went through this too, that they were at the top of, you know, their game and they were, you know, a VP of a very large organization for 25 years and they turned around and said, well, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something that I'm passionate and I'm happy about and I'm going to become a massotherapist and this is my dream. And that's what they did. So in sitting down, speaking with them and their family and this person, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, that is the stories. That is what coffee with cam is all about is real people, their careers and making others understand that, you know, the traditional path that we've all been told many years ago, you know, you go to university, you work in this career and then you retire. Well, that's not happening. This is happening. And that's what I want to share with others and share people's stories. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear more of your episodes as you, as you get that thing ramped up, you know, your story is inspiring because, you know, really everything that you're doing is, is led by passion, right? You started mm -hmm. this own business because that's what you're passionate about. You started, you know, started your podcast because that's what you're passionate about. What drives that for you? My family, okay. my family. Um, I would really have to say it's my family. It's um, my friends and it's also <laughs> and my family, my friends, and also being a young kid and getting told, you know, you're not going to be anything. Mm -hmm. And by going when I was in school and I remember a professor, you know, I was in public speaking and I was the shy girl who was nervous and everybody who knew who, when I say that, even to my friends and family, they're like, you're not shy. And I was like, no, but I was and I was mm -hmm. very shy and I was an introvert and I didn't believe that I was going to amount to anything. And it was a teacher who turned around and said, well, you're not going to be anything, you know, wow. like, nah, you're lucky. Just just get a job. And I was like, no, I'm going to do more and I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to bring it and you just wait and see, like, just wait because 
we shouldn't allow people to define us, and especially for young students and anybody in school, don't allow that to define you. It's not going to. You're going to create your path, and you are going to create what you want to do. So whether it's something out of passion, you know, or it's just a hobby that now you've turned into a career, whatever your path, beat to that drum. You know, yeah. schooling and everything is going to give you the tools for success, but don't let other people's um, ideas of you make you create that a reality, I guess you can say, make that become a reality. So, yeah, it was really, uh, <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> that's inspiring. That's, that's great that you're, you know, you can remember vividly, like somebody basically saying that, hey, you're not, you're not going to make it. And then, you know, here you are X amount of years later, still using that fuel for your fire. Um, oh, yeah. And I think it's great because you kind of have that passion, you know, you have a blend of like, you got a little bit of, oh, I'm going to stick it to you. And then you've got the, uh, you know, I'm doing this for my family. And I think it, it takes both, right? They're kind of pulling you forward because obviously there's times where it's not easy, right? Um, and tell us about that. Has this been an easy journey for you? Has this been hard? You know, what, what, how, how's it been since you've started out on your own? It's been, you know, it starting out on your own is a hard journey. You know, starting out, creating the company, you know, creating your ideas. It has been a hard journey. And every day, like I said, you know, it is not an easy challenge. Um, but it's as long as we have our passion and, you know, the team, we are very motivated um, to keep on producing those success stories with our applicants and success stories with our clients. Um, I find those challenges become something that fuels that fire, yep. you know. So it's, I really think that people, you know, starting out on your own, it's not going to be easy. And if it was, well, <laughs> let me know how. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do they say? Anything, uh, anything that's worth having is going to take hard work, right? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. What would you say, you know, when you're just looking at the recruiting industry as a whole, like, where do you kind of see, what are some of the trends, and maybe you can just speak to what's going on in, in your market up there in Canada, but what are some of the trends with recruiting when it comes to, you know, how the clients and candidates are inter interacting or just anything in general? Like, is there anything that's kind of standing out that's kind of, you see a shift happening in the industry? Mm -hmm. Well, I see more and more, you know, our, how can I say, um, the way that we recruit, you know, changing the way that we recruit and really, you know, Camming Job Blog, that was another platform that we put out. And it was the quick way to get to our applicants and for our applicants to see us. Um, you know, not so quick, I would say, but just a way for our applicants to see us. And I'm starting to see more and more people who are following that. And I'm like, right on, like, this is, this is the shift, you know, and we are taking the shift to you know, how do we get to our clients? How do we get to our applicants? You know, and being present. Um, so I'm seeing a big shift when it comes to social media. Um, even, you know, Instagram. When I first started on Instagram, people were like, really, you're going to post a job on Instagram? Is anybody even going to apply? Actually, yeah, people are going to apply on Instagram. People are going to contact and say, hey, I saw you on social media. Can you tell me more details about this job? or about the video or about, you know, your client. So that's really where I'm seeing the shift now. And you brought up something I think is so important that, you know, so many recruiters think that, you know, your only platform is LinkedIn and that's where you live and die. And, and there's such opportunity on these other social media platforms that people are just kind of keeping their blinders to because, you know, they're telling themselves the story that, well, it's not for business. Or, you know, people don't, my market doesn't hang out there and they forget that people have social lives and it's like, you have an opportunity to be really create a great presence for you. I mean, but, you know, you just mentioned what you've seen from Instagram, but are you doing other things on other social media channels? Like, is that fully part of your game plan now? Yeah. So right off the bat, we did, well, we did, we do use LinkedIn and LinkedIn. Yeah, it has been a great tool yeah. and it's been amazing. Um, but like you said, it's not the only platform. So we're on YouTube. So branching off onto YouTube and creating a presence on uh, Camming, the staffing solutions provider, um, doing that channel. But on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, um, one of my colleagues turned around and said, well, why aren't you doing Snap? I was like, Snap? Okay, let's check it out. Like, mm -hmm. so 
wherever we're able to, because I mean, every single one of us, we always have our phone, no matter where we go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the reality of the world that we live in. And, you know, we're constantly, if you're not looking at a cat video, you're looking at, you know, uh, some <laughs> quick post. So this is really what you need to do. And you need to be on all of the platforms, not just one. Mm-hmm. You know, go on everything. Go on your Instagram. Go on your Facebook. So, yeah, I really think that's right across the board. Yeah, I love that feedback because, I mean, I, that's one of the things I talk to people that they just, you know, and again, it's kind of like what society tells us, right? Like, oh, no, like. My recruiting trainer told me that LinkedIn and that's it and cold calling, I can make a hundred dials a day where, you know, there is so much out there and being able to attract these audiences and target people, you know, across these different platforms. Because I think the thing to, to remember is, you know, one, you made the point of everybody has their phone, but two, we don't know what everybody's behavior is. So some people love Facebook and some people love Instagram and some people are on Pinterest and there's all, you know, YouTube and there's all these different things. People, some people are video watchers. Well, then why not be a part of that? you know, your audience is really kind of hanging everywhere. And there's, you know, I could even make the case that some of the audience isn't on LinkedIn, you know, and I think the biggest thing, in my opinion about this is like to not prejudge where your audience is and just to show up and, and, you know, be present because I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. Exactly. And that's the other thing, like you said, you know, people have social lives, you know, we're not constantly only on one platform, Mm -hmm. you know, we're posting pictures about our pets, we're posting pictures about a birthday party, you know, and where are we posting those? Where are we doing this? We're doing this on our social platform, not our professional. However, we all come across something and we're like, hey, that's interesting. Okay, let me make a mental note. I need to contact so and so. Right. You know, so you need to be on all of those platforms. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back into it's so important to know who your audience is. Um, Mm -hmm. and then start to try to build that audience on these different platforms um, so that you can actually get the eyeballs because that's, you know, it's good to be present, but you also need to build the following as well. And, and that's where it kind of goes like, yeah, people have social lives and, you know, a message delivered to somebody, no matter if it's on TV, Facebook, LinkedIn is all going to be the same. You know, um, Mm -hmm. if it's, if it's going to hit home with them, then it doesn't matter where they're at, (laughs) they're going to be attracted to it, you know? Um, it could be an article link off of a off of a news site they're sitting on, you know. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, people just consume information everywhere now. I think. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's we don't understand. Not that we don't understand. I mean, if you don't know your audience, you know, fully in and out, like you don't know that uh, they have a football game or a soccer game. You know that they're an avid soccer player. Well, you're not going to know that. Okay, well maybe they are on a group on Facebook for soccer, or maybe they're on Facebook, or maybe they're not only on LinkedIn, you know, so this is the thing, it's really attracting your market and really, you know, not only showing one side, I mean, no person has just one side or one view, people Mm -hmm. have multiple views, people have multiple interests. So really attracting to that and adhering to that. Now, how much do you incorporate, you know, kind of some personal things, in your social media strategy. Do you do that at all? Do you share much with your family or anything like that? Or just what you have going on in your life? Um, I wouldn't say that I share so much with my family. You know, um, I don't go so much into my family or talk about my family on that. Just because I think right now, my children are at that age where they are Googling. <laughs> And they're like, hey, why'd you say that about me? Or why do you <laughs> don't post that? You know, don't post embarrassing that. Embarrassing mom, me. embarrassing like, mom. <laughs> exactly. And they're like, don't say that about me. Or, you know, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm so proud. Um, so I don't really post that site, but I will talk about some of my interests and, you know, uh, some of my experiences. And I did see one of the person uh, who posted on our chat here um, was one of my students from when I coach swimming. So a lot of the pictures people will see will be geared toward a sport because I'm really into sports. I'm really into swimming. So people will see my Sunday morning post from the pool when I was training and, hey guys, I'm up. Like who else is up? <laughs> right. So, but more on my family, not so, so much. That I, just due to their ages, they don't want to be on social media. <laughs> 
I'm like, so you, stay away from the, you stay away from embarrassing your kids. You're, you know, see, I see I'm the opposite. If my kids told me that, then I'd probably double down on posting to embarrass them more, but you're a good mom. <laughs> I take everything in me and it takes, Oh my gosh. My kids are like, Oh, did you really post that? Or, you know, when you look at the feeds and you'll see, Oh my gosh, uh, that video I posted of you when you were a baby, they're like, remove it. I'm like, Oh no, but I don't want to. It's so cute. And I, I shared everything, you know, but I, I have to respect them. So, and I do, I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I saw you, I think you're referring to Jerry that posted about, uh, that you, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, you know, kind of going off of that, cause I've, I've, I've done some things and I think that's kind of an authentic way of doing it. But do you think that that's a big important thing to attracting people to you is just kind of sharing what your interests are at least? Sometimes I do. Um, but I think for myself, when people, when they see me or when they get to know me, they're like, oh, wow, she's not like everybody else that, mm -hmm. you know, and really what you see when I post stuff on social media and when I talk about being excited for a, a client or being excited for an applicant, that's really what you get on a daily basis. And, you know, I would love for some of my clients to chime in, but they're, <laughs> they're <laughs> quiet. They'll be quiet on that, I'm sure. But you know, if I find an amazing applicant, you know, um, for one of my clients, it results in literally me with this headset calling them saying like, hey, oh my gosh, Donnie, I just found your person. You're going to love them. I love them. Oh my gosh, you have to meet with them. And this is really what I put forward on social media too, of how exciting I am, mm -hmm. you know? So it's something that it's kind of funny. What you see is what you get with me. So that's great. Yeah, see, I've, I uh, try to incorporate some of, you know, I'm like you, I'm very into sports and football's my football's my thing. And I've actually created some content where I'll do analogies around football and business development things and have fun. But, you know, I've attracted a couple of people to work with me that are me, like, mm -hmm. love college football, same approach in terms of, you know, growth mindset and want to develop. And so I've just had so many unique stories um, with people just you know, kind of gravitating towards me because we have a common interest, you know, and I think it's important to share some of those things because it's just another way for people to attach and, and connect to us. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's so important um, to be able to put it out there, but it is, it's, it's a balance, right? And especially on the platform that you're using, I think you want to be somewhat aware of it, but also not overthinking it, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think the yeah. more that you can kind of put out and be transparent about who you are, people like that, um, mm -hmm. especially now, you know, and I think that's also part of the differentiator now. You know, is there's, there's so many, there's so many recruiters and then there's so many coaches like myself, you know, and so much of it is like really just finding somebody that you want to work with, that you enjoy and you think you would enjoy working with. Um, so that's why I try to put myself out there. I want people to see exactly who I am. Uh, it's important to me, you know, so that mm -hmm. we can have a good working relationship. Exactly. And, you know, it's one thing when people see you on social media and, you know, if you're constantly, I post only like this, you know, very stern. Yep. And then they see you in public and it's like, well, I'm a goofball or, you know, I'm laughing or I'm bubbly or like I said, I'm very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when people see that, it's like, oh, wait, that's not who I thought I was signing on with. You know, I thought I was signing on with this person. So, you know, like you said, being transparent about who you are and putting it out there to social media. If you're going to post your stuff, well, make sure you post who you really are, you know, yeah. and let the audience see that because that's what they're going to be buying into is you. Yeah. So you've got a lot of momentum in your business right now. What are you, what are you excited for most over the next couple of years? Growing. I am excited about the growth. Um, you know, like I said, it was a challenge uh, when I first started up cam and really getting out there, being in a niche market. And, you know, when I first started going into aerospace, and now branching off into many different industries, I think for Cam, just the growth and seeing our team grow, I'm, I'm so humbled, you know, and I'm so humbled by the people who not only tune in, but the applicants, our clients. You know, I'm fortunate that I have such amazing clients, and I say that for my client applicants, you know, both sides that when I speak to somebody and they contact me and they're like, you know what, I dealt with recruiters in the past, but, you know, dealing with you, I feel comfortable. I'm confident, you know, you have my best interests at heart. 
I really do because I've been in that seat. I know what it's like dealing with like multiple recruiters. I know what it's like dealing with, you know, job hunting. It's not easy. It really isn't easy. So for Cam Inc., it's really honing in on that and growing our team. So that's what excites me. And obviously Coffee with Cam is like my passion, <laughs> you know, and just what I tell everybody, everybody who knows me, they're like, oh my goodness, it's not very often that you don't see me with a cup of coffee in my hand. <laughs> And a way that I was able to do that for work, <laughs> not work as a barista, um, you know. So it's really focusing on that and focusing on the growth of our organization and, you know, really coming out on social media and showing a different side of our capabilities with the interviews with Coffee with Cam and, you know, amazing people like you, you know, sitting down talking with everybody. I think that's uh, that's what I'm excited for. That's what gets me going now. <laughs> it's funny. Well, and, and you found a way to write off your coffees now. So that's huge. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, you, everybody's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. I just have a Starbucks in my office. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, I, we, you know, just for those of you that are listening, we, uh, uh, Crane interviewed me right before this and we had a great time on her show. Crane, are you looking for guests? Is there a way that people can get in touch with you about being on Coffee with Cam? Yeah, most definitely. I'm always, anybody who wants to have coffee with me can always uh, contact me on any social platform, you know, from LinkedIn, Kareen Stephanie on LinkedIn. You can always go to our website, uh, caminksolutions.ca and send us a quick note there. Um, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you guys are, if you see me and you want to have coffee with me, most definitely um, reach out and just say coffee. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> And we'll, uh, we'll, I'll tag you in this uh, video after the fact and people can get in touch with you directly through here. You know, I really appreciate you being here. This has been awesome and sharing your journey with us and all the little insights and little nuggets you've shared. I know are going to bring a lot of value to people, but if you can kind of close this thing out with one kind of core piece of advice for people, what, what would that, what would that be? Oh my gosh. Only one. <laughs> well, go ahead and go two or three. <laughs> oh no. Um, what can I tell everybody? You know, Making yourself, um, putting yourself out there on social media, it's not going to be easy. You know, don't, don't focus on the little details. You know, um, don't focus so much on, like we had discussed, your hair being right or this or that or what people are going to think. There is a market, there's an audience for pretty much everything that's out on social media. Really making it your own. Um, making, creating your own style and showing people who you are, you know, um, I think that would be a huge thing. And the other thing is don't let, don't let others define you. Um, you know, if somebody's going to tell you, no, you can't, um, you know, just push that envelope and say, yeah, I'm going to, you know, really take that in and use that to show people, you know, no, I am capable of doing this. I am going to make it my own and I'm here. So really, uh, really doing that. And my last mentors, oh my gosh, big, big thing. Have great mentors, have people around you who share your views and who can inspire you. And I always say mentors because every journey in your career, you're gonna have somebody who's gonna inspire you. You're gonna see somebody who um, will challenge you and you know, teach you. So really work with it and take every lesson. There is every lesson, good, bad, the ugly, whatever it is, really take it in and, you know, use it to better yourself moving forward. Yeah, I can't agree more with the mentor thing. I mean, considering I am one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Plug for I'll Johnny. Ahead, I'll go ahead and take that plug right there. But I think the other thing that you really nailed, um, as you're saying that, Green, is that there's an audience for everybody. You know, when putting yourself out there, you know, there's going to be enough people in the marketplace. There's, you know, this is a, we're not talking about Canada. We're not talking about United States. We're talking about the world now. Okay. And there's plenty of people out there as I interact with people worldwide. I've got clients in Australia and the UK and New Zealand and things like that, Canada. And we all have the same things, but there's, people are still attracted to people. It doesn't matter where they come from, you know, and just being yourself authentically. And I think that's such an important reminder is like, just be yourself. There's enough people that will like you. Uh, I love yeah. that advice. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about who's going to, you know, 
providing that you are happy with what you're doing and, you know, you're putting something out that is good and beneficial, you know, and you're proud of your content, have that pride. Really yep. show, you, you know, you're proud of what you've done. You're an individual. You're unique. There's not two of you. So, you know, don't worry about it because somebody could say the exact same thing, but it can come out with something completely different. And we see that, you know, and when you have people who try to copycat others, you know, I remember one of your interviews and it was so true. Um, one of the people that you had interviewed a little while ago and she was talking about that and I was like, you know what, she nailed it right on, you know, she nailed it right on the nose that, you know, people could say it, don't try to copy others, be yourself, be you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, authenticity. It's very, mm -hmm. very important. There's enough, there's enough out there for everybody. So, well, thank you again for being here, um, dropping all the knowledge, sharing your journey, super inspiring, you know, what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to continue to do. So, and, and thank you for having me on your show, everyone. Uh, Coffee Thanks. with Cam, you'll see my show uh, with her coming out here in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, but reach out to her on LinkedIn to try to connect with her and get on, get possibly interview or just pick her brain in terms of recruiting. Uh, Corinne's been awesome to know, um, awesome to work with. And I just thank you again for being here with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Well, we'll see you, uh, see you next time. We've got some more interviews coming up in the group later next week. We'll talk to you soon.